open at the very end, huh? Look at that view, guys. Beautiful. Oh. Where did you start? I started here. Oh. Just up the road. And then I rode all over those mountains out there. And where that radio tower is, I was up there. Sick. I miss dirt biking. Oh. But I just hurt my foot on the way back. It's slid into a tree, so I'm hoping it's gonna be just like one, two days of swollen. Custom ice on that. You guys from Kelowna? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh, hey guys, didn't see you there. Welcome to the show. My name is Marcel Ernie, pro superbike racer, and this is Dirt Bike Channel 2.0, featuring the 2020 KTM 300 XC TPI for throttle port injection. Right now I'm at 19.6 hours of test time on my new machine. Loving it by the way. Okay, okay sit down for this. This rear is breaking. This was more fun. Mountain bike style. <laughs> Second gear. Yeah. This is familiar territory, huh? Getting back to the original route here. Oh, my foot. I actually did hurt myself. Oh, oh my God. It whacked. Oh, my toes. It's up here. Oh, let's just put back. Oh. And I've got a lot of products to bring your way to show you installation videos, product reviews, and of course, long-term tests of the KTM. If you haven't already seen my first ride review, go check out my YouTube channel, just Ernie Racing, I-R-N-I-E, Racing, and check out my first ride review. And so far we've installed for aftermarket accessories, the Emperor Racing Pipe Guard Skid Plate, and it is working awesome. Here's some shot from Moab. Works really well. And I also put on the Emperor Racing Radiator Billet Radiator Braces for side impact and of course front uh, stabbing from trees and such. And uh, we know a tree can definitely stab into the bike and you. Check out this footage of almost getting impaled in my knee. Whoa. Oh my God. Oh, dude. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh. Oh my God. So let's move on to a subject that needs a lot of update and talk. And that is the oil injection system in these KTMs. And I wanted to say, how long does it last? Because these bikes run really well and a little leaner, they get much better fuel mileage and they don't use as much two stroke oil. Sometimes they're running a hundred to one. Sometimes they're maybe getting down to 40 to one. The ECM is controlling all that, and surprisingly, it doesn't use much oil. However, when you do cold starts, you see plenty of blue coming out of the muffler. You know, it's there, it's, it's, it's doing its job. So it's not like it's not blowing blue. <laughs> but um, I filled up to the near the top of the oil neck. Essentially, it started to bubble back on me, and I'm like, okay, it's full of oil. And for my first oil, I was using Amsoil Interceptor. Really popular sled, dirt bike oil, two strokes in general. And how long have I gone on that oil is amazing. At 19.6 hours, and I topped it up after, just during my first 0.6 hours. So at 0.6 hours, I topped it up full, and I haven't topped it up since. And when I show you how much is still in there, 
So essentially at 19 hours, which was seven days of Moab, here's some quick clips. Hey guys, woo, you missed a cool view spot. The initial break-in and then two rides with my buddy Kevin Lindquist up in uh, Joe Rich, I still haven't needed to add oil. And now I'm, I'm getting the, inter the, the oil light intermittently right now when I'm doing hill climbs or hard stopping. I gotta do it. Third gear, guys. stopping or when you start your bike on an off camber essentially because the sensor is saying you know add some oil but there's still plenty in there and it does oh, pick man. up on the bottom it picks up the back going down it it's out freaking tree in the face don't see going down it's much scarier for me <laughs> Oh my God, going down it was way scarier. It does pick up on the bottom, it picks up at the back of the bottom. So I'm gonna show you that essentially you can do nine rides successfully. And I mean, my Moab rides, were those were like six hour ride time. You know, that was 15 hours of ride time, essentially 19 hours of ride time in total. And the bike still has another couple of days of oil in it before you really need oil. Let's take a look. <laughs> Okay, so here is the oil reservoir, and you can see I put in a couple marks with the uh, right there, the orange marks as I went through days of riding in Moab. So that mark to the next one was one day of Moab, and then and then there's from there I did a couple rides locally, and that dropped it to where it is right now. Of course, it is on the kickstand. Let me level out the bike, guys. So right there, there's level. So that's where the oil is at. And the oil light really comes on when you reach where the plastic joins. You can see where the plastic has been welded together, melted together to form the, the reservoir. So you can see I still have plenty of oil on there. That's where the oil light will be strong. And of course, when you know when I'm riding around. Whoa! Oh, that was close on my bars and jolly. I'm doing sit down position now. Oh, it's a motor stop. Oh, this is round. Oh, he's tripping. It's a ridiculous pace. Oh, definitely overriding. So I want you to see there is in the light the oil reservoir it's picking up at the back see that's at the back of the tube back of the reservoir and there's the oil pump as well at the bottom and you can see the oil line right in there that's where you want to make sure it is oiled going up to the view called crack mountain let's go to the score of the crack yeah let's go get some crack yeah <laughs> there's a there's an obstacle in moab called the crack <laughs> so then my friend and i were on the radios we have radios i'll carry one on my bike and yeah. he has it in a side by side i'm like we're going to the crack and he's like i'm at the crack over and i'm like save the crack for me over <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny yeah. anyways okay guys i put it back let's see if the bike's on crack that's right Back to normal. Wow, it's ice. 
You're right. Second gear. All right, so here's from the other angle, guys. You can see I made a little dot there as well. And you can see the construction of the container. And uh, you can see the whole pickup system. Let me try to get, show you in there. Hard to see in there, but uh, yeah, right from the bottom there. The only thing I have to be concerned about maybe is if the bike is on a really steep downhill, it could start sucking in air if the oil is all to the front. And so that's why I decided today will be the day to film this video and show you with the hours, again, at 19.6 hours, and I filled it up at 0 0.6. I, might, I even have a shot of that. Let's go back right here. Filling it up. So quite amazing, guys. This thing, so you don't need to carry oil with you if you're gonna go do a multi-day trip. It's not gonna run through it as quick as you think. <laughs> I actually brought a couple of spare entire quarts and this one, which I still haven't, that's all it what took right there to, to top it up. <laughs> not very much, like five, 600 milliliters it holds. And you know, you don't, don't fill it right up to the top of the neck because you're just gonna ask for like problems of possible leakage. The older models, like the 18s, Apparently had a little bit of a leak issue at the top, but that's been corrected in the 20. I've had zero leaking issues. So I'm happy to report, guys. Oh, I see. <laughs> so for future episodes of this Dirt Bike Channel 2.0, I'm gonna be filming lots of rides, so lots of test time, and, and that's gonna involve testing products. So the next product that I wanna go over is I'm gonna raise my handlebars and I'm gonna use this Rocks. They were kind enough to send me their 1.75 inch riser and essentially goes in your stock handlebar location and then rises it and then you put your handlebar in the new pivot. And then the nice thing is you can actually pivot them forward and back slightly. Now, my buddy Kevin actually has these on his YZ and he says just don't pivot them too far forward because if you're in front of the forks, you're just gonna lose that controllability, that control. Look at this, guys. So he built a knee jump. Oh, he's got a transition into it. Holy shit. Oh, he's taking this way. Essentially, you need to be with the forks, with the bike, right? And uh, so that's coming up in a future test. Emperor also sent me their, you know, bark busters. I don't know what they want to technically call them. Uh, hand guards and uh, so I'll be installing these and not just typical I'm actually gonna do the threaded inserts in the bars so we'll make an installation video for that next for this oil fill up I'm gonna be going with the dominator now I'm gonna give the Amazon dominator a try if you're looking for Amazon products check out my website ernieracing.shopamsoil.com I'll throw it down below in the screen and it'll be in the description as well. So Dominator, let's give that a try next. And as of right now, I have Amsoil's 2050 MCV motorcycle oil, like their twin Harley oil for all the twin air-cooled motorcycles, because it's a, it's, a, it's a 50 viscosity, which KTM is asking for. They're asking for a 50 viscosity in the crank, in the, the gear box for these two strokes. And I want to try their new SA80. So this is a thinner viscosity. The typical 50, you know, 2050 um, is going to be around a 90 weight gear oil. And so we're going to try a little thinner viscosity that Amazon recommends for better shifting. And there's a magnet. There's nothing on there. It's no metal, nothing. I'm hoping it's gonna get rid of that little bit of clutch drag that I'm getting right now. Uh, when you start the bike in neutral, you know, it, you have to give it a little rev or it might stall on you in a certain situation. So that's coming up next as well. I'll let you know how that goes. And um, the folks at Tubeless were kind enough to send me uh, their whole freaking dual air chamber system. I don't, if you probably most of you guys are familiar with tubeless there's their logo right there and so I haven't had time to get this done yet but this will be the future winter is coming 
And right now, I actually have, see, Tubeless is made by Newtech. That's the parent company name. And um, I have the Newtech Nitro Moose in this rear tire. This is the OEM rear. And I put in the, the, um, the, the 305 Soft is in here right now because it happened to fit perfectly. There is a chart on their website from uh, Nitro Moose from Newtech. So you got to make sure you put the right moose in the right tire or it'll be too small or too big. And uh, the Soft Moose, they have a soft and a regular, simulates 6 to 8 PSI. And it worked awesome for Moab. And you can see... Moab has officially destroyed my rear tire. Not so good looking anymore, huh? And Moab also wrecked my front tire from landing on the rocks. You can see, so obviously this is the front edge. So this is my braking edge. The, the dirt's going like this. And it's taken out the front edge, you know, kind of like uh, at a 30 degree angle. And, uh, and then the inner knobs too are wearing kind of gnarly as well. So I'm going to, so for future testing, I'm going to get into the tire test game. I'm going to get multiple sets of wheels so I can be on the same trail and come and switch the tire, switch the wheel and see a direct comparison between brand new tires. So that's coming up on this dirt bike channel as well. And one of the first tires I've always wanted to test was the 505 Cheater. This is the 505 Hard Cheater. There you go. From Shinko. And uh, everyone gives really good reviews of this tire. Everybody really likes it. There's also a different cheater model that wears a little quicker. And uh, so this one's going to last decent length, apparently. And then I'm also going to try this, um, the Midas, um, which one is this called? The C19, guys, the C19. But I was just thinking that I actually wanted to try the 8090. Um, a fatter tire like this is good for rock and desert, but on a trail, sometimes it's just too wide and it sucks you up the trail. Uh, like a skinny trail, it's going to pull both directions when the side knobs catch. So a skinnier tire will help you steer single track you know, more effectively. So that's on the horizon, guys. Now, so back to the, the new tech here, Tubeless. So what they sent me is... This is their inner bladder system that goes to 100 PSI. Oh, right here. This is where you're going to fill it up. And then this is actually where you fill the tire up. And then you can put, you know, at whatever you want, 0 to 10 PSI. And the inner bladder is going to be at 100. So this thing in your tire, if you actually get a flat, like a real flat, you can fix it just like with a normal like tire plug kit. You know, any of those ones for your street bike or your car, stab it in there and... And you can go and you don't actually, you know, you get a little pump to put a few PSI in it would be nice as well. So, and then they sent me a spare inner bladder for the 21 and for the 18. And then they have, looks like rim tape. Yes, rim tape they, with the kit. Trail. This all fell off. I'll also give these a test from rocks. They have some, you know, some uh, bush deflectors. 
And here's the mount, so they, they actually go pretty far in front of your handlebars with that distance. And then mount up. So I'll give them a try. So I'm really liking these OEM hand flare guards. And it helps for a lot of the bush. But of course, um, the Bark Busters is important. So depending on what ride or where I'm riding, you know, whether it's a race or having some fun on some fast technical trail, I can always go back and forth between this style and the full wraparound Bark Buster guards as well. So I'll give you some information on that, guys. And I was carrying these spare levers with me for Moab, but um, Mountain Engineering has sent me their one finger brake and clutch levers, so that'll be future testing. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna let you go here, but uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I have all my suspension settings that I've been testing that I can tell you guys in another video. And I'm gonna do a video specifically on the power valve. Right now I'm at 1.5 millimeters from flush. And OEM is two and a half millimeters from flush. And I've played everything with it. I've taken out beyond flush, like completely out and all the way in and I got a lot of information, so that'll be a whole video on what's the best setting for the power valve on these TPIs. And as you probably know, KTM recommends not touching the power valve, but that is clearly just an issue they have with emissions, fuel mileage, just they can't, they can't include it in the manual because it's going to go against the, the laws that they're dealing with. But it's definitely an advantage to turn that out Start with a half a turn, turn it a full turn, turn it at one and a half, two. You can't go wrong. You're going to feel the characteristics. Essentially, as you turn it out, the preload, the, there's a preload spring. It's just like preloading your forks. You're removing the spring tension initially, and that's going to allow the power valve to open sooner because it's got less spring holding it closed. And when the power valve opens sooner, you get a more usable mid-range much more usable mid-range and smoother. From stock position, the bike is hard to ride on a hill climb because it's like beep, 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 beep. It's on and off. And once you open it up, the power valve hits on smoother earlier and you get to use the mid-range on the hill climbs. Anyways, guys, my name is Marcel Ernie. Lots of information coming your way. Stay tuned. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, get on my Patreon channel for all the videos that come out first on Patreon, and then a year later, sometimes sooner, I'll put them on YouTube for the public. But uh, if you want to see all the new action, all my race videos from Superbike Racing, Qualifying Practice, In the Life documentaries, get on my Patreon channel, patreon.com forward slash Ernie Racing. And you can also just send uh, paypal.me forward slash Ernie Racing if you just want to support the channel and support what I'm doing, giving you guys information. Because there's no money to be made on YouTube, I can tell you that. Not since uh, the crisis hit them. So next step is I'm going to install the, the Rocks risers. I'm going to drop the 2050 and put in the Amzol's Dirt SAE 80. And put in the Dominator 2-stroke oil. And I'll get back to you guys. Peace. Would you like? Oh man, that's fun for sure. Oh dude, the bars, it's uh, come night and day. Way better. Well, I'm fucking look, I was keeping up there, yeah. wasn't I? Yeah. Oh, well, push the pace down today. You want a little faster? No, no, no. <laughs> the lake view. But nice daylights are running out. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be stuck out there in the No, dark. so I came back. Fuck, I think I could ride the four, but as soon as it hits that. Uh, yeah, as soon as it you don't to see very well. It goes down real quick. 